Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutorlini Test Prep. Today we'll be going over lesson number nine on how to use Desmos for the digital SAT math. Regression. Let's get started. So you're gonna see lots of questions like this on the digital SAT where they either give you two or three or four points either typed out as ordered pairs in the question or in a table like this one. So here's all you need to do. For this one, we recognize that it's a linear function. And what we're gonna do is we look at the answer choices and we recognize that all of these answer choices are in the form y equals mx plus b. That should look familiar to you if you've been studying for the test. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Desmos and we're gonna type this table in. So let's do that. So if you don't know, to make a table, what you do is you click on this plus button and then click on table. So we're gonna put zero, one, two. And then for our y's or our f of x's, remember those are interchangeable, 29, 32, 35. 29, 32, 35. And you can navigate this table using the arrow keys it's probably easier to use the arrow keys than to press enter because it'll like make a new row or, or something weird. So just maybe use the arrow keys. And here's the part that you probably don't know how to do. So pay very close attention. So we're just gonna type in y equals mx plus b. But you see that doesn't help us. We need to tell Desmos to find mx plus b from that table using regression. So. We have to be very careful to make sure below the y's and the x's that we put ones. So all you have to do, you don't have to type in the subscript. All you have to do is type y and then press one and it'll automatically make it a subscript. And now instead of equals to tell it to do a regression, we're going to press the tilde key. To press tilde on your keyboard, you're gonna hold down shift and then press the key right above tab. Now I'm gonna type in m, x, but remember it's not x, it's x1, because that's what it says in the table, right? x1 plus b. And you know you'll did it right, you know, you'll know you did it right if um, there is an r squared of one. If you got an r squared of one, that means you have an absolutely perfect, flawless regression. So, let me ungraph this and then graph my points and see where are the points? Oh, they're actually way up there, see them? And let's type in what I think the equation is by looking at the parameters. So see, it tells me m is three and b is 29. So y equals, I think that'll be three x plus 29. Let me type that in, three x plus 29. Ah, it goes right through the points. So I bet that's my answer. So let's go back to question one and pick three X plus 29, which is answer choice A. Great, let's try another one. This one's different, but now that you have some idea of what to do, see if you can pause this video and try it on your own. So for this one, they tell us it's a quadratic function and there's three forms for quadratics you have to know for the test. Factored form, standard form, and vertex form. You should recognize by looking at the answer choices that these are in standard form. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. So let's do the same thing. We're gonna go in, type in the table, and then we're gonna use the regression to solve it. So let's make a new table. And I believe it's negative one, zero, one. And then 10, 14, 20. And this one is a quadratic. So let me see the points. Yep, they're right there. So we're gonna type in y1, again, you always gotta put one after the variables when you're regressing. Tilde, and then ax squared plus bx plus c, but just make sure you're putting x1 instead of x. So ax1 squared, right arrow key, 
plus bx1. And you see, oh, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. My r squared is not 1. It's, it's off, right? But let me put plus c. Ah, now it's perfect. I have an r squared equals 1. The curve goes right through the points. So we're all good. So let's just unshade this and make sure I can translate this correctly for the final answer. So, OK, so a equals 1. So that's 1x squared plus 5x plus c, which is 14. Oh, that goes to all the points. That looks good. But just remember, we don't write 1 as a coefficient. It's implied. OK, let's make sure that's still right. Ah, it looks good. It goes through all the points. And I think we're all set for this one. So let's go back. Let's see if that's an answer choice. x squared plus 5x plus 14. Ah, that is an answer choice. Option D. Very helpful for this one. It saved us a, a good bit of time. Now, I just want to show you something really cool. So you can actually do this on a graphing calculator. It's a little bit more cumbersome, but you can do it. But what's great about Desmos is you can regress any equation, anything you can think of, right? So like on the graphing calculator, there's only like, I think, seven or eight options for regression that you can do. But you can regress anything you can think of, right? So, so, so check this out. What if, let's say, I didn't want standard form. I, I, I want vertex form. So let's type that in. A x1 minus h squared plus k. Oh, you see, I get a perfect regression. And that would be um, a equals 1, h equals negative 2.5, and k equals 7.75. So let me write that down. 1x minus negative 2.5, which is the same as plus 2.5 squared plus k plus 7.75. And again, we don't write 1 as a coefficient. It's implied. Ah, so you see, I just found the vertex form really quickly. And maybe that could be helpful for a, another question that's kind of like this, or maybe for a, a word problem that's like this, where you have to uh, have a projectile quadratic, and you have to find the vertex form of it from two points. That could be super helpful. Um, I couldn't find a question like this using vertex form. but there is one in the sample questions that illustrates how powerful this can be and how helpful this can be. And I'm going to do that with you guys right now. So let's go to question three. Pause this video. And now that you have some idea what to do, see if you can solve it. OK. So you see they give us two points. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to plug those points in, but we're just going to put it in a table because that'll be easier for us. Um, I think that's the easiest way to do it. You, you can type in ordered pairs, but let's just make a table. And um, we'll put 0, 10. And we'll put negative 2 and 325 over 36. And I'm going to zoom out to see where those points are. Ah, they're over here. And this is the crazy part. This question probably takes a minute or two. And honestly, most kids could not get it right. However, look at this. They give you the equation that they want. So you could just regress that on Desmos. A graphing calculator can't do that, but Desmos can. I think the graphing calculator can only do a times b to the x or something like that. So. Check this out. Let's do y1 tilde, and then exactly what they have written, a to the x plus b. a to the x1, right arrow key, plus b. And I get an r squared equal 1. And I have this perfect equation. And let's just make sure it's right. y equals, I think a is 6. So that would be 6 to the x plus 9. Beautiful. So we could now use that to answer a follow-up question. 
But get this, it already tells us A equals six and B equals nine. All right, and the question, if you didn't notice, probably should have pointed this out. It says, what is the value of AB? So, all right, AB. AB is 54. That is incredibly helpful. That is answer choice C. Wow. Not only did we improve our consistency on this question, our chances of getting it right, but we just saved probably a minute to two minutes that we can now use on much harder, challenging questions. So I hope you guys, even though this can be a little tricky, I hope you take the time to learn this and apply this as you're going through the test, because there's a lot of different situations where this could help you. OK, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you are interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor all sections of the SAT and all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.